What is up everyone? My name is Andrew. If you don't know me, you should subscribe because like why not? You should also hit the notification bell down below to be notified every time I upload a new video. But anyway, today I am here for one reason. I am here for a great reason and I am here to do my book review on A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I love Sarah J Mass and I love to do book reviews. It is definitely one of my all-time favorite videos to film, so I'm very excited today to do this video. First of all, I just want to say that the beginning of this video will be non-spoiler, so you will not get spoiled, and I will let you know before I get into spoilers because I definitely have a lot of thoughts, and the second half of this video will be filled with spoilers and all that juicy stuff that we just have to talk about. But for those of you who don't know, A Court of Silver Flames is Sarah J Maas's fourth book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. So there are three books in A Court of Thorns and Roses, A Court of Thorns and Roses, A Court of Mist and Fury, and A Court of Wings and Ruin. And then she also has a novella called A Court of Frost and Starlight. Now, this book is kind of a sequel series. It doesn't exactly pertain to the first trilogy. The first trilogy is actually pretty wrapped up and there's just some other things and other characters that we can dive into and that's exactly what she did in A Court of Silver Flames. This book in particular follows Nesta, who is the sister of Feyre, and Feyre was the main character in A Court of Thorns and Roses. So in this one, we get a totally new perspective, a couple, well, two different perspectives, but they are both characters we've already seen, and we're just getting to learn Nesta's story on her own, and I personally loved this book so much. I gave this book five out of five stars, and I think that it is no secret on my channel that I just love Sarah J Maas, because I think she just writes very well, and she knows how to handle certain topics and that was definitely shown through this book. I think that Nesta's growth is one of the main themes of course of this book but just the way that she gets there and all the other things that come with it, it is a lot. It is a heavy book. It deals with a lot of stuff as Nesta is in a bad headspace and if you don't know Nesta, she is just this fiery girl who is angry and she has these things that are haunting her from her past and all these traumatic events that she's trying to work through and trying to become better but at the same time she just has this personality where it comes off like she does not care one bit she does not give a shit at all so a lot of people don't like Nesta and I see it I see why but personally when I read A Court of Thorns and Roses the first time I also hated Nesta I was like this girl just is so rude to everyone and nobody is even being rude to her it's just unnecessary but when i reread a quarter thorns and roses to get ready for a quarter silver flames i found that i was watching out more for nesta and looking more analytically analytically at what she was saying and why she did certain things and i found that i was coming to actually enjoy her character and that definitely propelled me to really be excited for this book and when i read it i was definitely just given what I wanted and I think this book was really good. This is an adult fantasy so it delves into a lot of things that may be inappropriate for younger readers so I don't know exactly what the adult age is maybe 17 and up 18 and up whatever but I know it is targeted at a more new adult audience so take that as you will. I will say that there are a few things in this book that you might want to be warned about so um some things that i would give some trigger warnings for if you would like a full-on list of trigger warnings i would definitely look that up because i'm not gonna hit all of them i'm sure but some trigger warnings that i would give is that there's a lot of swearing in this book <laughs> um when sarah j mass is let loose to write not in the ya genre she definitely doesn't care about dropping f-bombs and personally i don't care i think it's funny the way she uses them but some people get really offended by that so there's a lot of those um there's also a lot of smut in this book and <laughs> sarah j mass was not lying when she said that this was the smuttiest book that she's ever written she was not lying let me just say that um and that portion i think everything that was <laughs> i can't even talk I rather enjoyed all of that aspect of the book. I think that she knows how to write it. It was enjoyable, but I will say there were some parts where it was kind of random and I was like, what? The okay, like we were talking about something else, but now we're doing this, okay? And I went along with it and I still think it was written well, but it was just the placement of some of the scenes. I was like, um, maybe we could add a little bit more lead up to certain things, but you know, 
Sarah J Maas is the writer, I'm not. And if she wanted it that way, she wanted it that way. And I'm not gonna complain. <laughs> so one of the bigger trigger warnings that I would say needs to be addressed is that there is the conversation of rape amongst characters and the trauma of it that has happened to some characters. So that's something to be noted when going into this book. Um, but besides those three things, those are the biggest things that I would say. So besides that, again, if there's anything else, you probably need to look it up on the internet because I don't know all of them, but those are the ones that stuck out to me. This book is literally so huge, it can literally kill a man, and I think Nesta would be proud that a book of her story is big enough to kill a man. Um, my lights just decided to fall, okay. <laughs> but seriously, like this book is so heavy, my hands are getting so tired holding it, but I'm glad. This book is 750 pages of just pure entertainment, and I really enjoyed it. I know there are probably a few questions some people have, so First, I just want to say, yes, Reese and Feyre are in this book quite a bit. We do see where they are at in this point of their lives. Number two, yes, you should read the other three of the A Court of Thorns and Roses series before you read this one. And number three, yes, it's worth reading. I definitely think it's worth reading if you've read the other ones. Yes, you should pick it up if you are an Akatar stan. Okay. <laughs> in terms of writing style, I think this was a typical Sarah J Maas book and that's not a bad thing in my book. That is a very good thing in my book. It was a book I did not want to finish. I didn't want to put it away. I didn't want to part ways with it. I wanted to keep reading this story specifically and be in this world specifically with uh, Nesta and Cassian for a long time. And I'm glad that I got 750 pages, but I could have had more. I could have read over a thousand pages with them because I was thoroughly entertained the entire book. And I think that's a big thing that makes me actually want to give a book five stars when I was laughing and I was entertained and I was engaged with the story and I definitely was. I think the pacing from the beginning to the middle was perfect like there wasn't really any slow parts and I think there could be an argument that it was repetitive and that the same things were happening but to have but to be able to watch the growth of somebody and you see the monotonous things that they do to get there, that was kind of what that was kind of what needed to happen. So I understood why and I enjoyed it. The one thing I would say is the ending was kind of rushed. I felt like there was a big pivotal part at the end that could have been drawn out and it could have been more expanded on and it could have been like a bigger thing in the book than it was. And I definitely do think that there are a lot of aspects that are set up for more books. I think that we will see more books because it has a more, um, at, has a more beginning book of a series feel. It feels like we're setting up for another big thing. And a lot of big things did happen in this book, but there can definitely be more. And I definitely see her doing more in the future. And I think she's already confirmed that. Not 100% sure, but I think she has. So I'm interested to see what is coming next, if it's gonna be about Nesta, or if we're gonna go move on to Elaine, if we're gonna wrap up again and end with another favorite book. I don't know, I have no idea where it's going, but I'm here for the ride, and I was definitely here for this, and I loved it. So five out of five stars read. I am now gonna get into spoilers, so if you do not wanna be spoiled for A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas, I would get out of the video now because I need to gush, I need to talk, I need to get into all of the little details because I have a very extensive list of notes that I took while I was reading reading. I didn't annotate because I really wanted to but I make it a personal rule where I don't annotate books the first time around. I just read them for enjoyment, read it for pleasure through, through and through so I don't have to stop and the second time I read I will annotate so that'll be coming one day because I know I definitely want to reread but I'm gonna get into spoilers now so bye to people who don't want to be spoiled. <laughs> I'm putting this book down. It's too heavy. I dropped it. We covered up my Shadowhunter books. That kind of hurt my heart a little bit but it's just for now. It's fine. For Nesta and Cassian, I would do it again. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so now what we get to get into the fun stuff. We get to go into all the details and I'm really excited about this. So first off, if you are here and you have read the book and you're through it, you are on the other side, hello. Um, how'd you like it? What are your feels? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Um, <laughs> I know that so many people don't like Nesta, so this book, I'm scared. I'm scared to watch the reviews. I'm scared to see what people have to say because, ah, I don't know. I don't know, what I don't know what's gonna happen. I haven't read any reviews. I've been avoiding anything on Twitter. I literally muted everything about Nesta, Course Over Flames, Sarah J Mass, everything, because I didn't wanna get spoiled and I don't wanna know anybody else's opinion. I don't wanna like block mine, so I didn't do that. 
and so I'm just nervous but all I have for you right now is my fresh thoughts so I just take very random notes like I it's not very analytical because I don't take the time to do that but I do jot down a few big things that I like and everything like that or things that stuck out that I didn't like so let's just get into it it might not even be in chronological order but it's all things I was very excited about and I have to talk to you guys about First off, kind of a side note, the cover, the cover with the mask. I was really thinking that it was so ugly and I did not understand what it was doing. Why is it a mask? What what were we doing? What were they thinking? But then we discover the whole new dead trope, the dread trope, I already forgot. The three things, the mask, the harp, the crown. And that just leads me to believe that there will be more and maybe we will get another cover with the harp or the crown. And I think that would be so cool if that happened. But then again, it seems like we're done with the dread trope and that is put away. So it's just a mask. But I did like that we saw the mask and Nesta put it on and that was a crazy scene. And okay, I'm gonna get to that I'm jumping ahead but yeah I just wanted to say I'm glad the cover had some significance because I was really hating it now I can live with it okay the first note that I took was the scene where Reese and Nesta's powers were going against each other because Nesta was having a nightmare I thought that scene was really cool because one we got to see into Nesta's mind into her fears into her nightmares so that was really cool two her powers came out in that we got to see a very raw form of her magic that was very secretive like even to the reader nesta did not know what it was and she wasn't even showing us or telling us and we were in her head so that says something but it was cool to see how she how sergey mass described it one but also just how much magic and power nesta had and the pure death pure death <laughs> like Miss Ma'am is Lady Death, pure death, and that's insane. And of course, the only person who could rival it, who could stifle, stifle, stifle it, um, stop it, I don't know, is Reese. And Reese's powers have always intrigued me. I think he obviously is the most powerful High Lord. He could be the king of the entire Prithian, but his powers of the darkness and the stars and all that stuff, just in my head, it's very vivid. So that scene really stuck out to me and that scene really painted a picture in my head and I just saw it like I was watching a movie. It was great. I definitely think it also set up for the entire vibe and relationship of Reese and Nesta. The fact that they were going against each other, basically the whole book, the fact that they were on such rocky grounds, like did not like each other, that just kind of kicked it off and like, this is where we are. Our powers are against each other. We don't like each other. But of course, Reese is gonna try to help Nesta. He was fearful when he looked and saw her nightmares, how terrible her trauma was. And he was kind of awakened to how much she's dealing with. And also we get to see amongst all of that why Reese is having his own shit going on and I'll get to that but that whole thing was cool also loved getting to see Cassian very grateful whenever Nesta woke up from her nightmare and the fact that he slept beside her bed the whole night in a chair was just it was great it was it was the angst I wanted and needed <laughs> the fact that Nesta was just reading smutty books and the house was giving them to her and recommending them to her I don't know the logistics of a house reading a book but that was very funny to me and I liked that that was thrown in there I knew from snippets by Sergey Mass that a thing with Nesta is that she reads books with smut and reads romance books and I think that is just a very nice touch and the fact that reading A Court of Silver Flames is basically a romance with smut and that is what Nesta is reading and that whole kind of connection where we're reading that as Nesta is reading those it's just funny to me I just like it I don't know when we find out that uh Feyre is pregnant I ha I saw it coming because Reese was acting a fool like he was acting over territorial even more than he already does so I was like Mm, I already know Feyre is pregnant at some point and I'm pretty sure that's gonna be thrown in here and she had this giant shield that would like block everything nobody could even touch her not even Cassian I was like yeah that's overprotective that is too much that means Feyre is with child with Reese's child and I was right and that whole thing was great you know we already knew that we already knew Faison was gonna have a baby but Finding out that the baby has wings was just the cutest thing ever. Like just picturing a little baby with wings, that's so cute. And Cassian was happy and everybody's like, yay, like that's so great. He's gonna be the cutest little boy. He's gonna be a little Illyrian wing boy. And then they're like, oh, but Feyre's gonna die. And <laughs> that whole subplot was really cool. I think that all books need subplots and that was a great one to throw in because we do be missing Reese and Feyre. So I loved getting to see that. 
um, not, didn't love getting to see Reese literally losing his shit because Feyre was gonna die and then Reese was gonna die and then the baby was gonna die and there would be no face in family at all. But you know, things happened. But just the fact that the baby had wings, I loved that. <laughs> I liked that there was a lot of vivid scenes in this book that really stuck with me. So the next thing I wanna talk about in my notes, I kind of like, almost made chapter titles for my different notes so this one I called the silence of Urid um so or when we're in the bog of Urid the bog that is in Urid I didn't understand so I was like okay is it the bog or is it Urid or is the bog you know do you get what I'm saying anyway so that place we're in that scary ass place that literally just was described as being so silent so that you talk and then the sound kind of just evaporates and is soaked into nothing that's honestly scary. I don't like it too quiet. I mean, I do like it quiet when I'm reading, but if I'm left with other people and it's too quiet, I'm like, mm, I don't trust this. So that was very scary. But the whole part with the Kelpie, mm, when the Kelpie came out of the water, the, okay, so, so Cassian and Asriel are like getting beat up and trying to, you know, escape that and Cassian dumps Nesta on a tree and Nesta's alone and then she's like, you know, I gotta get to Cassian because I'm scared he's dead because, you know, she loves him anyway, but she won't admit it. So Nesta is alone and she's on the bank of this black see-through transparent river and the Kelpie comes out and he is described as being on all fours with black eyes, a very pale white skin and a black tongue. That literally scared the shit out of me. I was honestly shaking and I was scared. And I love when books can actually scare me because a book is not a form of media that is, can scare you easily. So that was described really good, but the Kelpie, mm, I didn't like the Kelpie. I could just see that all too well in my head. And when Nesta literally peed herself, I was like, me too, that, that Kelpie had to go. <laughs> and I'm glad that Nesta did kill him. And the fact that she got the mask in the water, so vivid, such a great scene. The whole thing about Feyre having a baby with wings is fine and dandy, except that she doesn't know that she could possibly die and that it's a big risk, it's huge. It's a it's a big fucking deal and everyone else around her knows and is scared and terrified But Feyre is over there like wow like I'm so happy my baby's gonna have wings like it's gonna hurt It's gonna be complicated, but it's gonna be okay and everybody else is like it's not gonna be okay We're gonna lose our high lady and we're gonna lose our new baby, but the fact that <clears throat> You know, I was I'm rooting for Nesta. I'm on her side. I'm in her corner in her ring like I'm here for her but then she does this these things. She walks into a room and she sees someone and she likes them. They're her family, they're her friends, but she sees them and it's like, it doesn't connect in her mind that she should be nice. It's like, oh, there's my friend, let me talk shit. Let me say the worst thing possible, let me be rude. And it's not okay, <laughs> but I was living for it. I was living for it every time. And so when Nesta is mad because everybody is keeping the secrets from her that she literally made daggers and swords she just made them but she wasn't even trying uh and so she's like you know what Feyre everybody's hiding stuff from you like you're stupid too I'm not the fool here you're also a fool so she tells Feyre that the baby has wings and that it's a terrible thing like it's gonna be catastrophic and she could die and Feyre's like what do you mean like Reese didn't tell me what do you like what do you mean and she's like sobbing because it's bad and she's realizing it and the way Nesta told her was just not good no Nesta don't do that and I don't stand by that it was wrong and I was sad and I didn't like that but the fact that Cassie <laughs> Cassie and went straight to Reese and didn't know what, didn't know what Nesta was gonna say but Reese in his head finds out that Feyre finds out and Reese is like Cassie in get Nesta out of this city right now before I fucking kill her Okay, Reese saying that about Nesta, I freaked out. He was so pissed. <laughs> he was so pissed and that's just, it's not funny, but it is funny. The fact that he went to that length and said he would kill her, like, dude. Reese and Feyre are like enemies to family lovers because they are such enemies at this point. Reese hates her. He hates her. And that line was just funny. 
So of course, then Cassian's like, come on, Nesta, like you are a child. I have to give you punishment because you don't know how to talk nicely to people and you're very rude. So they go and they go hiking and they go to the lake. And I think that the lake scene was clearly a very pivotal low point for Nesta. It was where her and Cassian had a good talk, where Nesta finally broke down and sobbed and let the cry out that we all sometimes have to let out. We all gotta cry every once in a while and just sob. And she did that and I could just, I felt good when she was doing it because I knew she was feeling good letting it out. And Cassian was there by her side and she was definitely building up that relationship with Cassian at the same time while letting down her walls, while really taking in what her deal is and why she's upset and all the bad things that are going on. So I really liked that and I think that was a very pivotal point in the book. Also, it was definitely there said that Nesta had dealt with suicidal thoughts and that she didn't want to live and we could tell throughout the beginning and throughout the previous books how she was spending her life and sleeping with strangers and drinking all the freaking alcohol she could spending the court's money on giving everyone drinks <laughs> like if I was in that if I was in that bar and I got some free drinks I would be like thank you Nesta about time our government is giving us something like thank you high lord and high lady anyway so just <laughs> We could, we already knew that Nesta didn't deem her life worthy. She didn't think that she deserved to live or be happy or anything. So that was really sad. And I like that this pivotal low, we really saw that. We really saw that, you know what? This girl is going through it because she really doesn't care. She really doesn't care if she's alive or not. And Cassian saw that finally. He re he thought about it. He thought he knew it. But then to have it really address and Nesta really say it, that was the low. That was the all-time low for Nesta. Sad hours, sad hours. I noticed when they were mentioning the Valkyrie, there was a specific scene that said, you are a novice, then you are a blade, then you are a Valkyrie. And then I made the correlation to that is what the parts are split up in the book. So part one is novice, part two is blade, part three is Valkyrie, part four is ant anorexia, anorexia. So that was a great theme in the book. That was just a great way to weave in the story of the Valkyrie with the overall book and it the stylistic points a bit the writing stylistic points I think were very good like I'll get to that more but I really I really enjoyed that part with the with all the part titles when it's brought up that Nesta <laughs> Reese is like Nesta you gotta be worth something like you gotta do something for us so we need you to seduce Eris we need you to dance with him because you're a great dancer because Elaine randomly gave us this backstory of you seducing somebody when you were 14. So you need to dance with Eris, duh, and just seduce him, make him love you. Not Maybe not even love, just make him want you. Make him lust after you to the point where he wants to marry you. Um, but just give him a dance. And Cassian, <laughs> Cassian had words to this. He was opposed to this and he said, over my dead fucking body. <laughs> I was alone when I read that and I was literally dying laughing to myself because I could just picture Cassian being like sitting there in the room like across the desk from Reese and Reese is like Nesta has to dance with Eris and Cassian is like over my dead fucking body. <laughs> She's not and that was just gold. I loved that. <laughs> My next title was Bye Bye Lanthus because when Nesta defeated Lanthus and he is literally a immortal that cannot die. He's, it's even more than being immortal. It's literally, I cannot die. Like I am invincible. I will never die. I am deathless. I can't die. And then Nesta's like, mm, no, doesn't sound right. <laughs> I don't think so. And then she just kills him <laughs> with her anorexia. I think it was with that blade, with that sword. I'm pretty sure. If I, am I wrong? Or was their powers? Something. She unmade him. And she killed the unkillable. A queen. Go off. But that was great. Bye bye Lanthus. <laughs> As I said with the whole part names of the book, there's a lot of bookception. I mentioned this with like the part titles and then also with the way that we are reading a smutty book while Nesta is reading smutty books. Uh, that's also, I feel like that's bookception. It just feels like it in my head. But there is a bigger bookception. Page 573. It's the gift that Gwyn gives to Emery and Nesta. So she gives them a chapter manuscript from Meryl's book that she's writing and it's all about Emery, Gwyn, and Nesta and the fact that they're training to become Valkyrie and awakening this 
old thing that has been into something new and I loved that. Nesta and Emery were just so enthralled by this. The fact that they had their own little book club, like I want to join, um, and they're like, I'm in a book, like we're in a book. That's, and I'm like, Nesta, yes you are, you're in a book, for real. And that whole bookception just pleased me. It pleased my soul. I love bookception. <laughs> and I know it's not like literal bookception, it's not really, but in my head it counts. Nesta did a lot of things in this book that made me angry and that made me be like, you're just taking 10 steps backwards but the little things she did to take steps forward even if they were half a step even if they were the smallest things i was so proud of her one of those that i found very vital was when she overcame her fear of fire when she had the hearth bear fire and she listened to the snapping and she controlled herself controlled her mind to really get through that trauma of hearing her father's neck snapping from highburn to being able to hear the fire crackle and not addressing it or um, connecting that to her father's death, that was such a that was such a big thing. Like Nesta did it on her own. She's she literally did that. Like she did that, and I was really proud of her. Finding yourself at such a low point that something so small to someone else is the hugest thing for you. It's a huge milestone. Getting out of bed and getting dressed. Getting out of bed, brushing your teeth. Like doing things that are so small to other people, but can mean so much to you because maybe you're dealing with stuff mentally, you're dealing with stuff physically, things are going wrong, your life is just really tough at that point. Little things like that, that can motivate a person, it just made me so proud. Finally, we get to the Hewn City, we get to the Winter Solstice, we get to the dance. I was waiting for this whole time. Ever since Sergei Mas released that snippet of Eris dancing with Nesta, I was like, what the hell is he doing here? What? How did this happen? Is Nesta trying to make Cassian jealous? What's going on? And I was very happy to learn that it wasn't that, that Nesta wasn't actually gonna go that low and like try to be with Eris. She was actually forced into it kind of by Reese. But Reese is like, it's your choice. But what choice does she have, if we're being honest? Um, but I finally we get to the scene and Cassian getting it from his point of view that he was so jealous. The angst that I live for. It was the best scene. Um, I just, I live for the angst, honestly. And so I really liked that. I really liked that whole dancing, especially Nesta dancing. Like the way that she was described as being such a great dancer, I was really living for it. I really liked that. And whenever Cassian was like, you know, I can't take this anymore. And he just walks up to Eris and Nesta and he's like, move, <laughs> like move. You already had two dances, it's my turn. And that was just the jealousy that I signed up to see with Cassian and Eris, honestly. The two were fighting like the entire book, which was kind of funny, um, but Cassian knew Nesta didn't really like Eris, but then again, he's like, move. And what did Eris do? Called him a brute, but he did move, so. Who really won? <laughs> Cassian really won. <laughs> Nesta going to the winter solstice family party at the house, the river house, the different houses was just a lot. Um, but with everybody there, all the family exchanging presents, and you know, if they knew Nesta was going, more people could have got her gifts. Like, that's sorry. <laughs> like, Reese brings out this giant pile of presents, and then is like, there's none for Nesta. That's rude. But okay. Um, anyway, Nesta didn't get anybody anything either. I'm just... <laughs> I'm just protecting Nesta at this point, I'm sorry. But Azriel gave Nesta a book light and it was the cutest thing, or a fade light, I'm sorry, a fade light so she can read whenever she's going to sleep that, and not hurt her eyes. That was the nicest thing that Azriel has ever done. And I was pleasantly surprised with how much as we got in this book because I love Azriel. he's great. I hope that in the next book he is gonna be the main character or he's gonna be with Elaine or something. We're gonna get to see more of him and more of his inner thoughts and story. But when he gave her that present, that was so nice. It made me see how much Azriel was there for Cassian. Like Cassian is his brother, that's his best friend. So he's there for Cassian in the ways that he is gonna support his relationship with Nesta and he's not gonna be discouraging and he's gonna be, he was already including her in the family. Like he got her a gift. Azriel doesn't seem like the type to just give anyone a gift. So that felt really good to me. It felt reassuring to see Azriel reaching out a hand to Nesta and not only Cassian being the only one besides her sisters trying to reach out and bring her into the family. So. I love that. The next note I called the music orb. And I know I know what you're thinking. I know what we're all thinking. 
Cassian is the sweetest. He is the sweetest male. That I was wondering the whole time. I was like, what did Cassian get her? What is this? And when we learned what he got her the previous year that got thrown into the lake because Nesta is rude, um, it was a book, like one of the first or the first ever bound book form thing ever. And that was so sweet. But what does Cassian do? He tops it. And Nesta didn't even know it. So he gets her this musical orb, the Symphonia, I think is what it is actually called that plays music and it he, the fact that he went back and made them play all the songs again with nobody in the room so that he could record it for her with no like idle chatter in the back none of the crowd or anything that was so sweet and he even went to some of the taverns that she liked to get the songs that she loves best and that that was so sweet nesta knew she knew that she didn't deserve that because she's She's freaking mean but then the whole part where the confessions are coming out and Nesta's like I can't take this I don't deserve you Cassian chapter 58 chapter 58 is my new chapter 55 like I just or maybe it's more like it's like chapter 54 and chapter 55 mixed together chapter 58 and I loved it I loved that the as soon as something sweet happened then we get to this argument and Nesta's like pissed off and she's like I'm not taking it and Cassian's like what the fuck it's not a wedding ring and then Nesta's like I know I would use Eris for that and Cassian just gets so mad and they're literally so dysfunctional but it works it's fine it works and that that whole gift was just the sweetest thing when we have the fight between Nesta and Cassian when the whole thing comes out and she's tells him flat out that she doesn't deserve him and how good and brave he is i literally cried but also i liked that we got to see how real her thoughts and emotions were like that is literally the thing that's been holding her back this whole time now it's out in the open now what are we going to do with it i thought that that was going to end that chapter was going to end with her and him confirming that they're mates because i've suspected it forever i've suspected it for so long now especially throughout this book and there was just the little hints the little sentences that made me for sure that they were mates so at this point i was like okay it's about to be confirmed this is gonna be great and then it wasn't confirmed and i was like wait a second are they not mates and she dragged that on and on and on for a couple more chapters and i was like can i just know and then it just comes out flat like cassian's like we're mates like you knew that and Nesta's like what like no I'm not gonna admit it Cassian's like I'm your freaking mate dude and Nesta's like mm. yes but I'm not gonna say yes and it, that whole thing was just frustrating to me I just I was like it would have been a perfect moment for them to come out and be like my mate my mate but they did it and you know when it finally did come out uh, that we knew I was so happy because they're mates and I wanted them to be mates but <clears throat> when we got to the whole thing that Nesta, Gwyn, and Emery had to participate in the rite, I was like, oh shit. I didn't expect that. I mean, I kind of expected that, but I didn't expect them to get kidnapped and thrown into it. I expected them to just voluntarily do it, but it, it didn't seem like they were gonna, so it made sense finally when we were there. I was like, ah, okay, we've been talking about this for a little time. They're, they're all like going in this direction, and here we are. It didn't make sense that Cassian would leave Nesta that much alone unless he was trying to get over the mating bond snapping into place. So I knew, but when finally Nesta admits it because she admits it to herself and she re makes the realization come to life and she's like, my mate, I know that I can kill you. She's talking to like Belisus, Belius, I don't know his name, Belisus, you know I'm talking about. She's like, I know I can kill you because my mate trained me. I was proud. I was proud of Cassian because who wouldn't be proud to have Cassian as a mate? He's such a good, holy good person. And then I was proud that Nesta finally admitted it to everyone. Well, to herself, which is all that matters because it finally was like locked in and she got that strength to go and persevere and kill that dude. I have to dedicate a bit to Emery and Gwen because I really loved them. They are Nesta's first friends and they're just friends with her because they've been through some of the same things. They all have a lot in common with trauma, but also they genuinely like Nesta and before they even knew her whole story, they didn't judge her and they still didn't judge her when they knew her story. So props to them. I loved that whole friendship. I like to see books that have that. You have your found family, you have your family, and then you have your friends and they even call themselves sisters and I loved that and it was like, I think it's gonna give Nesta something to where she has these friends and she knows what a sister 
like a sister relationship can be so hopefully she takes that and she transforms that into something with uh Feyre and Elaine I'd love to see that but when she gave up her own spot to make it to the top for Gwen and Emery, it really just solidified how much Nesta had grown that she's like, you know what? These are my friends. I'm going to do it for them. Y'all go. And they did that shit. They literally did that. They got to the top when nobody, literally all the Illyrians were like, they can't, they will never, they would not be able to do that. And they did that shit. And I'm just proud. That was just a great part to be included. And I'm just, I'm happy for Emery and Gwen. <laughs> I knew that Brillian, Brylian, whatever, the crone, was gonna come into play the fact that she had the crown somehow. The fact I knew that she was gonna use someone. I should know who. Thought she was using Eris. Then we come to find out Nesta is like, you know, I'm gonna die. And then Billius, Billy, I don't know what his name is, Billy, he's gone, he's killed, he's dead because Cassian killed him. I was like, Cassian's here to save the day but this doesn't make sense because he was just you know taken and basically enslaved by Brillian Brillian not good at these names and then <laughs> Cassian's like now I'm going to slit your pretty little throat and I'm like I know Cassian and Nesta say some things they shouldn't say to each other I know that they talk a bit messy but I didn't expect Cassian to say that and so I was shook the shock on my face that I was just, it, I didn't enjoy that because I was upset. I was scared. I didn't know what was going to happen. The fact that we got to see Face End, Feyre and Recent have their baby. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to get that. I didn't, we were going to, I didn't think we were going to get an entire birthing scene, but I was happy. I was like, okay, I'm here for this. This is an adult book. We can have a birthing scene if we want to. And it was great. Like, I mean, I would have been very mad if I didn't get to know what happened between the baby, especially the fact that it was brought into this book as such a subplot. So Nesta, I knew, I was like, if she is like the controller of death, then she should be able to stop it. She should be able to prevent Feyre from dying. So all along, I wasn't worried, of course, because I know Sergio Bass wouldn't kill off a face and baby. And I knew that Nesta had this power, but seeing it, seeing the way that she did that, I liked the way that she wrote that. I liked the way that Nesta's powers were used and the fact that she had to give everything back to the cauldron, but she still has a little bit left. She still has some powers, but that just also really added to the way Nesta was, you know what? I'm not gonna be selfish. I'm gonna save my family. They are my family. And then she aided and everyone being okay. And she kind of saved the day. And then we have the face and family nice and whole and we have Nyx. I really love that we got the baby's name and I can just picture this little boy kind of just looks like this, but a baby. And he has wings and black hair and the blue eyes and his name is Nyx. I think it's Nyx. Like, is there's no, way, there's no other way to pronounce NYX, is there? If I'm wrong, like, it's Nyx, I'm pretty sure. If it's like Nye or something, I'm gonna be so mad, but it's Nyx, I'm sure. And I just like that we got to have the baby's name. Like, now we know. Now we know how Risa, Risa, <laughs> Feyre and Risa and Nyx are doing. So that was cute. Of course, now that Nesta has given Risa something um, that he wants, now Risa is in her debt and now he's okay with her. I was just very put off by Risa. Like, I love him and I know he was under a lot of stress trying to keep his family alive, his, you know, mate and baby, but he was not even encouraging to Feyre at all and no, to Nesta at all. And you think that he would because he saw Feyre go through a lot of the same trauma and I get that Nesta hurt Feyre, but that's her family. So, you know, I was just frustrated with Reese and it's definitely, it probably has to do with now in this book, we are seeing Reese from Nesta's point of view. We are seeing Reese from a totally new perspective, whereas Feyre saw him as a very bad guy to seeing him with like love lenses. Like she just saw him and everything he did as good and that she still loved him. So getting to see him from a very unbiased point of view was great. And I was just kind of mad at Reese that it took that much. It took Nesta literally saving everyone for him to even give her respect. Thank you, Reese. Finally, but it shouldn't have taken that long, but I still love reason. It's fine. <laughs> the next one is titled You a Coward, and this stems from the scene of Cassian talking to Eris for the last time, and they were going over the parallels between them, or Cassian kind of really saw the parallels, and I saw them too throughout the book. The fact that Eris was born rich, born to have everything that he wants, 
and that and yet he didn't have love and he didn't have kindness and nurturing and then we have Cassian who was born with nothing he was born to nothing with nothing had to fight for every little thing had to fight to even be alive and even be able to find a place where people would accept him but once Cassian did he had that love growing up he had his brothers and he had Reason's mom and he found the family and the love and that's what Eris lacked so there is such a big parallel between the two because they both have the opposite of the other growing up and it definitely shows how different you turn out depending on how you're raised and like what how much love you're raised with I guess and the fact that Eris had none like his dad does not care about him he literally interrogated his own son and like tortured him so I like to see that I like that Cassian acknowledged that and he sees it but also he and that whole thing he was like you know you could be a good guy like you could be like me you could be a good person that people look up to and you know maybe more does forgive you for some things and you did do a little bit of good but overall you a coward you a coward Eris like there's nothing else to say you a coward and then that's the last we see of Eris and Cassian is done <laughs> and I just really like that he was like you a coward point blank period that's it <laughs> I feel like I was finally able to release a breath I hadn't known I was holding this entire, the entire Akadar series and the entire 750 page thick ass book A Court of Silver Flames is. Finally, I could release a breath when these sisters, the Archeron sisters, are finally at peace. Like, thank freaking gosh that we are finally at peace like it's about fucking time when they go to visit their dad's gravesite it's great because they're finally working towards being a family being like normal sisters like yes they're gonna fight but they're not gonna literally hate each other you know normal people still love each other and i'm glad that we're gonna get there i'm glad that they have found peace that was that was a nice ending that is what we have been going to it's definitely gonna change things going forward because you know that like family dilemmas there's not the family pettiness and arguments and hatred so that'll be nice to go forward we don't have to worry about that anymore i liked that i'm glad they found their peace and i called that title sisters at peace <laughs> something i do is read acknowledgements in books they're like my favorite thing it's almost like a very dire need to get through the book so i can read the acknowledgements because if the acknowledgements are good they will make me tear up and make me reflect on the entire book that I read. So when Sarah J Mass addresses in her acknowledgments, she is saying that she hopes her readers are loved and know that they are worthy of love. And that hit me because one, it's something I think a lot of people struggle with. It's something that I have struggled with, thinking that maybe you're not worthy of things in your life. You're not worthy of love. Like that's so sad. And it takes a long time for people to come to this realization that everybody deserves that everybody deserves to feel like they are worthy and so when she mentioned that i teared up i was like yes yes ma'am and it really relates back to nesta and the whole journey and her whole story because that is something throughout the entire book that she is fighting to learn that she is fighting to be able to realize that she is worthy of a family and friends and true relationships and cassian and love and being deserving and actually self-analyzing that she is worthy of it. So I like that that kind of wrapped up the whole thing. Overall, I loved getting to know Nesta more personally than ever before. I loved getting to see her side of things. I loved being in her head and I will definitely miss it. And I loved being Cassian's head too. He's so funny. He's such a, like, a really good balance to Nesta's fiery anger because he's just like funny and laughs at everything and lovable and goofy but also will kill a man if he has to and has done that millions of times. But I just love their dynamic. Like they're such a dynamic duo. They're iconic. <laughs> I did love where uh, Sergio Mass took their relationship in terms of all the smut. Like I was here for it. It was great. It was a good time. Um, but overall, just finally getting to know that Cassian and Nesta are mates, finally getting them to admit it to each other and finally getting them to, you know, not just use each other for just the sex the fact that they're now mates it's great it's everything i was working towards during the whole book so i'm happy i'm content <laughs> i don't want this video to end because i know it's going to be the last i have to talk about a quarter silver flames for a while um but good things have to come to an end that's how you know they were good because you'll miss it and i'll definitely miss cassie and nesta but it was an honor nesta 
to go on your journey. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to know your story. I think a big thing with me is that characters and people in general, like everyone has a story and it's worth telling. And I'd say to people who don't like Nesta that her story deserved to be told. And it was definitely a good story. On that note, that is gonna be it. So thank you to Sarah J Mass for this five star read. Thank you for delivering once again, like always. Can't wait for the next one. Hope we get a new update on that soon, but that's pretty much all I have to say. If you have stuck around to the end of this video, I'm sorry that it was incredibly long, but go ahead and comment down the little flame emoji, the little fire emoji for our fiery queen Nesta. And yeah, that's all I have to say. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. I saw you out in Hollywood, so we drove to Laurel Canyon. I gave you all of my spare time and you just couldn't stand it. You say she's a work of art. You pick her up from school, but she breaks your heart.